Arch Oblers lights out everybody. caution you. These lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. November of 1939. Astronomically, that isn't even a blink in the eye of the universe, but it's a very long time measured in the length of our own very ephemeral lives. On that day, I aired our next story. Remember that date, 1939. A lot of heartbeats before we went to war against the madness of Adolf Hitler and his friend Benito. Listen to Bavisphere. The sea is very quiet. Yes, Your Excellency. Will it be very quiet under the water? No motion, Your Excellency. And so it'll all be very amusing. I hope so, sir. The captain ought to have everything ready by now, sir. If you'll excuse me now, Your Excellency, I'll find a seat. No, no, just a moment, Doctor. Yes, Your Excellency? You're much too impatient, my dear young friend. One of the great joys of an experience is to savor it before it happens. Yes, stay and talk to me. As you say, Your Excellency. How far under will we have to go to break the record? Over half a mile. Mm-hmm. How far's the bottom? Just over the record mark. Deeper than any man's ever gone. It'll all be very amusing. Suddenly the wind's changed. Always at this hour of the day, Your Excellency. It's time to go. I assure you that the sea will wait for us. But I am exhausted. Don't you. think so much, my young friend. Thinking is an unnecessary pastime. The emotions are much more dependable. My thoughts tell me that this little excursion under the sea will be quite precarious. On the other hand, my emotions tell me that it will be most interesting and amusing. Your Excellency, we are ready. Oh, Captain, you too are impatient, huh? I, I don't know what you mean. That is to say... No, no, don't splutter. Now, come ahead, my young and impatient friend. They'll go aboard your diving bell and begin our little adventure. Come. Attention! Your Excellency, we are quite ready. Well, Doctor, is everything to your satisfaction? Did you put in an extra oxygen tank, Captain? Yes, sir. Everything just as you said, Doctor. The telephone communication been tested? Twenty times. Third flight? I assure you everything has been tested, Doctor. The winds go smoothly now? Why, oh, yes, I believe... I don't want you to believe. I want you to know. But I assure you. Go and test it at once. Yes, Doctor. At once, Doctor. All right, then. Test number one. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. Test number one. All right. Well, your thoroughness is most commendable, Doctor. We are going half a mile below the sea, sir. Nothing can be left to chance. The pressures down there are almost beyond imagination. Yes, I know, I know. Particularly on this dive, everything must be protection. You mean the record? I mean, Your Excellency, that your life is precious to the state. Yes. The press of the world has known me only as a record breaker in the world of what they so quaintly term power politics. By nightfall, they'll herald me as a record breaker in the world, the world of science, eh, Doctor? If all goes well, Your Excellency. Yes. Hey, you have doubts? No one can predict the ways of the sea. What are you talking about? We'll be quite apart from the sea inside of the steel ball, this, this bathosphere. Oxygen to breathe, telephones with which to communicate, light with which to see. Why should there be any question? Question of the human factor, Your Excellency. <laughs> You're as cautious as they said. I like that. I, too, am a cautious man. Oh, yes, indeed. My success has been based upon determining that the unpredictable cannot occur before I, shall I say, embark upon my bold adventure. I'm talking quite frankly with you, eh, Doctor? Well, it pleases me to do so. For a few hours, we'll be locked up in that steel ball. There's no reason you shouldn't know a little about your leader, is there? 
You honor me, sir. For example, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt the steel cable which will drop us down beneath the ocean has strength enough to hold 50 such steel spheres as the one we'll be in. I know, too, that you have made, let me think, you've made 30 such descents towards the floor of the ocean without the slightest misadventure. The men on this cruise are there specially trained for the work. And with my life in their hands, I'm sure they'll be particularly careful on this descent. Hey, Doctor? There is no doubt of it, sir. All ready now, sir. Shall we go now, Your Excellency? Of course, of course. Careful, Your Excellency. The deck is quite wet here. Well, thank you, Captain. Very really thought, sir. Thank you, sir. Attention! No, no. No formalities. Let the men go about their business so we can get started. Yes, Your Excellency. That's your work, men. Aye, 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 aye. Would you like to get into the bath of here first, Your Excellency? No, no. Offer you. Quite a small doorway, isn't it? How fortunate we're both small, lean men, Doctor. Lean men. Caesar once said something about that sort, didn't he? I don't know much about that sort of thing, sir. Oh, I didn't imagine, sir. Get in, Doctor. I'll follow you. Yes, sir. Head first into the steel ball. Quite without dignity, eh, Captain? Shall I help you, sir? No, no, I'll make it all right. You ready for me, Doctor? Come ahead, sir. And uh, careful of the bolt end, sir. Yes, yes, of course I am. Well, what are we waiting for? Captain. Aye, sir. Close her up. Aye, sir. Your ears. Cover your ears, sir. Huh? The bolts and wing bolts that hold the door shut, they have to be tightened by hammering with a sledge. <coughs> Cover your ears, sir. But what an infernal din. Open the other way. Hammering is the only definite guarantee of a watertight seal, sir. My ears. All well in there, sir? What's that? A voice for the telephone, sir. They'll communicate with us from the deck every three minutes. If one of us doesn't answer within half a minute, the orders are to pull us up. An excellent safety precaution. Yes, indeed. All well in there, doctor? All well. We're moving. Yes. Lifting us out to the end of the boom, and then down we go. Look, sir, you can see the deck down there through the windows. Glass and clear. Clearest in the world. Quartz glass to stand the pressure. Letting us down in the water, aren't they? Yes, sir, in a moment. We're under. Yes, I... I turn the oxygen higher. The light... So green. Yes. Soon it will be blue. Then a darker blue until at around 2,000 feet we'll be in a darkness that goes beyond dark. Complete eternal night. Eternal night under the water. How amusing. mile of water crushing down upon us. The word crushing is most inappropriate at this time, my young friend. My apologies, Your Excellency. I've been watching the water. You said it would be as night. Yet it isn't black, it's... It's blue. Strangest blue. A few more hundred feet and there will be no more color in the water, sir. The light out there. What? I can't quite make it out, sir. Perhaps some sort of a luminous plankton. <laughs> it's amusing. The fish is carrying you along their own electric plants. The dark's alive with them, sir. Oh, look, sir. What? That 
small flat fish. You see, even his teeth gleam with the luminous mucus. I've caught that sort in the trawls. They can eat organisms as large as they are. Wait, I'll, I'll turn on the searchlight and you'll see. No, 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 never mind. I didn't come under the sea out of any interest in those bits of fish. As you say, sir. They light up like a train in the dark. Oh, but the portholes of a boat would be a more appropriate figure of speech. Well, seen one, seen them all. All well down there, sir? All well. How far down now? Ask him. How far? 1,350 feet. Right. You make good time, huh? Yes, sir. They lower us very quickly, sir. A six-foot ball containing a very earnest young man and the leader of the state. Headed for... What should we say, Doctor? A new record, sir. Is that as far as your imagination carries you? At the moment, I cannot say, Your Excellency. Uh, perhaps when we reach the end of the cable, we'll discuss life and death very profoundly, eh, my friend? Philosophy under the sea. <laughs> Doctor, in your other trips, have you seen anything out there? So vague, huge, you know what I mean. Yes, sir. Several times. Well? Shadowy and indistinct. I couldn't say what, sir. Can't you guess? I have no answer. All well down there? Sir. Oh, tell him yes, 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 and stop annoying us. All well, and just a compliment, sir. You've reached 3,028 feet, sir. That was Bibi's record. Huh? The old one. 3,030. Broken it. 3,100. Doctor, that's quite enough. 3,150. Doctor, did you hear me? Broken the record on a few feet of spare. Order them to hold us out. 3,200. Doctor, you out of your head. I gave you orders. Have them pull us up. I've had enough of this. I tell you that I... to ignore my orders. I said to go up. What are you doing now? What was that lever that you threw? Answer me. Yes, I'll answer. Haven't you forgotten something, Doctor? What? To say, sir, your excellency. Excellency? Here at the bottom of the sea? What? What's happened to you? All of a sudden, you... Now, the excitement of creating a new record, a little too much for you, eh, my young friend? Well, it's understandable. Now, sing the ship and have them draw us up. Your little adventure is over. 
Didn't you hear me? I said signal the ship. How? You out of your mind completely. Telephone them. At once, you hear me? A telephone consists of a carbon transmitter, receiver, actuating battery, and connecting wire. We have no telephone. Get to one side. Hello. Hello out there. Hello. Hello, answer me. Hello. Hello, blast you, answer me. Hello. But they don't... Uh, the wire's torn loose. Would you know how to fix it, Your Excellency? What? Huh? I see. It happened when we bumped on the bottom, didn't it? Well, can't you fix it? I can, but I won't, Your Excellency. What is this? It's taken you a great number of moments longer than I expected to ask that question. You noticed that I've called you Your Excellency a couple of times, but that was the end of that. From now on, I will call you your infernal excellency. How amusing. Still amusing. Yes. I don't believe it. You think it's some kind of madness on my part, but you'll do something about it. Not I, you. I? You have an emergency way of signaling. Yes, I know you have. You flashed the searchlight on and off three times, and the flow of current traces it up on deck, and they know that it's an emergency. I'll go ahead and do it, and perhaps I'll forget your little... Shall we call it... joke? I am quite content to stay down here. Turn on the searchlight. All right, I'll do it myself. Why waste your time? You've so little of it left. What do you mean by that? The searchlight, too, is disconnected. Why? There is no need of it. It will be best to die in the dark. Die? Yes. This is impossible. I investigated you, your record, your family, your associates. Clearest record in the state. You have no reason or the will to kill me. Kill me? I'm fairly funny. A young, empty-headed fool killed me. <laughs> That's very amusing. You'll be afraid. Is it possible that you've forgotten the final emergency signal, you fool? Yes, I said signal. The signal of silence. Now try the telephone that's scheduled, and when we don't answer, they'll pull us up. Have you forgotten that? It's been more than three minutes since the last signal. If what you say is true, why aren't we moving? We... We are. For all I know, we... We are. Are we? Darkness, who can tell if there's enough for motion? You know we're motionless. As quiet as in a tomb. Appropriate, then. And we'll stay here. I know that. Huh? That leave up on the roof that I pulled. Well? It threw the end of the steel cable free. Yes, severed the cord between ourselves and the ship and the world. No. We are here, Your Infernal Excellency. Down here to stay. No. You lie. I don't believe you. They'll pull us up. The telephone, here. Here, you up there, listen. Get me up. Get me up. You up there, hear me. It's your leader. Get me out of here. Get me out of here, you hear me? Get me out of here. Out of here. Unbelievable. Oxygen left for another hour. And it takes you ten precious minutes of your precious life to believe. You do believe you're going to die now, don't you? But I... I'm sure nothing could happen. Every detail of the machinery. The record of every member of the crew. And I was one of those who was perfectly harmless. Hmm? Yes, you passed. Since a boy trained in the schools of the state. The father an official. Why do you do this to me? Why? Your ego is so great that even now, knowing you're going to die here with me, you're less concerned with death than you are with knowing wherein you failed. Answer me, why do you do this? You were trained in my schools, brought up to think the way you should think. Who up there made you do this thing and why? It will be a slow death, as slow as the death of my country. 
Answer me, who and why? Your mouth will bite for air. And there won't be enough to let you live, and yet there'll be enough so that you won't quite die. You'll tell me you will. Your lungs will reach up through your mouth. A breath of air, just another. There won't be another. And as you die, you'll know it. I want to know one thing. Why do you do this? Why, why, why? Yes, I'll give you your whys. You trained me in your school. And from morning to night, what went into my head was only what you decreed was right and proper for a good citizen of your eternal state to know. Yes, you crammed my head full. But there's one place you and your books and your speeches couldn't reach. My heart. Your heart? Yes, heart. You heard me, heart. My head said believe. My heart said no. My head said obey. My heart said no. That's where you made your mistake, you devil. You didn't start in young enough with me. For the heart that was born inside of me has brought you here to die. Die. I don't understand. Wait, I, I'll turn a little more oxygen on. That'll give me a little more strength to keep on telling you your fires and cut the breath left for you after I'm finished. What was I saying? Yes, that you didn't condition me quite well enough. Should have started with the embryo, for somewhere along the line a little humanity got inside of me that cried out against what you were doing. It grew and grew until it said you had to die. And you will die. Yes, here in the black under the sea. And they won't roll drums for you, march for you. Ended here. What have you to say to that? You fool. Fool? Is that all you answer? Yes, fool. You think I'm a fool to die here with you? You call me a fool when I know that ending here, I give a new beginning to those up there. Yes, such a fool. Well, stop saying that. They won't say it back in the cities when they know that they're free. You fool? You think the freeing them of me will make them free? Yes, yes, of course it will. I call you fool again. How do you think I became the head of the state? Through my great wisdom? I'm really not so wise. Through my great courage? No man has courage of that sort to stand up single-handed against the bullets and the bayonets of the entrenched powers. And how? How did I do it? With lies and ruthlessness and cruelty, I know. You don't know a thing. You saw the end result surrounded by pomp and circumstance and you couldn't see the means. All right, I know I'm going to die. When a man is expected to die as long as I have, the actuality isn't quite as frightening as you might think. Since I am going to die, I'll have the one small satisfaction of showing you that you're an empty-headed fool. Stop saying that! Oh, you too have an ego. Apparently it's lived for weeks on how you'd make me plead and beg and squirm down on my knees. I had a few moments of hysteria, didn't I? You like that. But you don't like this. My sitting in the dark so calmly telling you that you're a fool? I haven't failed. You're here. You failed because if you're killing me and yourself to give them back their freedom, whatever that word means, you're dying quite in vain. You're saying that because you think... No, don't talk. Listen to me. I'll tell you where you failed. I came into power not alone through my own strength, but because the conditions of our country were such that other men sitting on their wealth came to a decision that I alone could keep them there. But it was you... Then you listen. When an ancient rule of privilege is threatened, it seeks to live no matter what the cost. The cost of them was me, and they found me worth it. For I threw to the mass none of the wealth that work to build, but only fighting phrases of prejudice and hate to cost the men who made me nothing but the rent of the halls for the simple to hear my opiates. So I call you fool. Fool to die and fool to kill me. Well, the conditions that made me will still exist when I'm dead. You free them of me. But what of hunger? What of ruthless exploitation? These will still be free up there to put hate and desperation into men. And so the ones who gave me power will find a new leader to stop the Romney's rebellion with all the tricks that I taught them. A new leader... You hear me, fool, or a new leader? No, it isn't true. It can't be true. It's so dark. If I could see your face to see the fool discovering he's a fool. They will be free. They will, they will. What magic do you think will come into the air when I'm dead? Will men forget that greed and say, Oh, we've quite enough. That's enough for everyone. Let each share according to his needs. No fool. With me or without me, the game will be played just as it always has been played. So you're a fool and die like one. I, well, what could I have done? I had to do something. I'll tell you what you could have done. 
You could have done the one thing that would have in time helped destroy not only me, but those who made me. You could have gone to the people. What? Yes, walked among them, worked among them. And at every chance whispered to them the things I kept from them. A noose would have been around your neck every time you opened up your mouth. And yet, in that talking of liberty and freedom and common decency and all the rest of that sort of thing, there would have been far more meaning in this futile murdering of me. I've had them hunted down and shot each of those who dare to whisper among the people. But as they died, I didn't call them fools because I knew that they were wise. Not only through the will to live and do or the great bludgeoning mass of their people was their hope of making that new world they wanted. Oh, why have I bothered talking? Yes, Vicar. I'm tired. Hand me something heavy, fool. Why? 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 More explanations? All right, the last one. You think I'm going to sit here and wait and count my every breath until the dark's crawling with horrors and I'm crawl... No. I'll end it now, quickly. Yes, faster than a bullet shot. Give me something heavy, I tell you. I'll smash the glass. The water, tons of it, smashing in. I'll be dead, 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 faster than the thought and never ended. Give me something to smash the glass or I'll... All well down there, sir? Voice. Telephone. All well. Take us up. We're moving. There's water on the glass. We're moving. Doctor, the cable... I lied. But all this time, why... My orders to the crew were to leave us alone on the bottom as soon as the slackening of the wire showed them we'd hit the bottom. Telephone? I reconnected it while you talked. Then... You didn't really mean to kill me. Kill you? Yes, I meant to kill you. I had it all planned out. Tell you what I told you, and then you'd go quite crazy with fear. And after that... I'd kill you. 2,900 feet. All well down there, sir? All well. And yet you didn't. The lights of the creatures out there. Blinking of stars on a cold night. Why didn't you kill me? I want to know. What would have been the good of it? A fool and a figurehead die together. No good of it. So you believed me. Even a fool can understand futility. The water's getting lighter. Soon we'll be back. Up there. It'll be very strange at first. I don't much care now, yet I'll ask. What happens to me? You? I told you many things down there, didn't I? Yes, too many things. A man, in doubt as I was, talks too much. And since you of necessity heard what I said, when we get there, I will probably have you shot. The victim sentences his murderer. It will be most amusing. 